Today, we are going to go over a villain who was so OP that not only did he take over the entire show he was featured in, he forced us, the viewers, to stop watching the show entirely. Like look at this graph. This is when Negan is introduced into The Walking Dead and we get that crazy ass cliffhanger which then leads to the premiere of season 7 getting this huge spike in viewers. But after this point, the show just goes on a monumental landslide. The show literally reads record lows. I mention all this just to say, it's not even Negan's fault. Did The Walking Dead viewership take a hit after Negan's arrival? It definitely did, but correlation does not mean causation. If you were to ask a Walking Dead fan if they like Negan, I promise you the majority of them would say, yeah, I did. He was a badass. But if you also ask the same person, did you like the show after he was introduced, they would also say no. Or at least they would tell you that's when they began to fall out of love with the show. But again, it wasn't entirely his fault. And for me personally, I like the idea of Negan as a villain. They just made this man too overpowered. When the season 7 premiere aired, I was just a little naive Walking Dead fan who had never read the comics. So when Rick and the group were in the predicament they were in, I was like, oh, Rick will find a way out of this. Just like he did in Terminus and just like he did with the Claimers group. Absolutely not. Negan bashes in Abraham's head, then bashes in Glenn's head. And to this day, I still feel this is a top three traumatic moment in my life. And it's not two or three. My younger self was coping so hard in the moment that I started to really think, wow, the Rick time travel arc about to go stupid. Because ain't no damn way Abraham and Glenn's head just got turned into pumpkin squash in front of the back. But seriously, I hold the hopelessness that I felt in that scene up with pretty much any other viewing experience I had in a TV show or movie. Even Thanos snapping half the universe away goodbye doesn't reach these heights because I knew they would just somehow get their get back. But The Walking Dead does a good job of shutting that shit down because we just see Negan absolutely sunning Rick. He gives Rick a choice, chop your son's hand off or I kill him. So Rick obviously chooses to chop his son's arm off only for Negan to stop him just as he's about to do it because all he wanted out of that situation was to show to Rick and the group that he has control over them. But what makes this scene so hard to watch is how submissive Rick looks in this scene. Rick is panting like a dog while Negan is holding his mouth, telling Rick he owns him. Let's see how they massacred yet another one of our childhood heroes. I'm out. I don't, you think I'm about to, I'm not watching this. Look. Yeah, I know a lot of people say Glenn and Abraham's death made them stop watching the show, but that right there was just as hard to watch. And after Negan is done terrorizing them, they just pan to Rick's whole group, who looks defeated as ever. Like, look at Rosita's face. She is so over this zombie apocalypse thing. And I would be too, because why in a zombie apocalypse, where you know there's zombies, is a guy in a tight ass leather jacket and a red scarf my biggest worry? And to top it all off, he carries around a club with barbed wire. That's like the most stereotypical zombie attire ever. You can't compete with that. Now everything I mentioned so far was only the season premiere. Negan still has a whole season to break down more of Rick's group members, specifically Daryl. Now everyone knows Daryl doesn't take shit from no one, so Negan has to go above and beyond to try to break him down. So he first puts him in a cell and threatens to kill him with Lucille for not cooperating. And Daryl just goes straight Kobe mode and doesn't even flinch when Negan attempts to hit him with Lucille. Screw it. So badass. Then they just jump his ass. Daryl does land a nasty right hand though. Like this gotta be bro's first time jumping someone cause he's just looking around like we, we jumping? We, we jumping him? Like yes bro we're jumping him. Keep your eyes on the prize. Okay so after Daryl gets jumped. Fight back man! Fight back! He gets back in his cell and you know he's got a few bruises but you know he'll be alright. It'll take a lot more beatings to break him down. Until this man Dwight shows Daryl a picture of Glenn's deceased Ow! body. And if y'all didn't know, Glenn's death was kinda Daryl's fault. So he just breaks down crying in his cell. And as messed up as that is, I gotta give it up to Dwight here. Cause that's just W henchman activity. Cause first of all, who's taking pictures in a zombie apocalypse? And second, who's taking pictures of deceased bodies in a zombie apocalypse? This is clearly a man who has been through his fair share of torturings. The CIA needs to hire this man immediately. So after Negan is done breaking down Daryl, he takes a trip to Alexandria. And ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to Negan Debo Smith. Because this man straight up walks into Alexandria. 
and takes half of their shit in front of everyone. Not only that, he makes Rick give him a whole tour of the area like he's a Redfin agent. And to make things worse, he starts filming Rick and instigating him. And we all know the universal rule of when someone is being pressed or embarrassed. No matter how scared you were in that situation, once them cameras come out, you instantly start acting tough. And Rick really was clutching his bat like he was going to do something until this man Gabriel came out of nowhere and defused the situation. But then Carl almost shoots one of Negan's members over the amount of stuff they were taking. So Negan just straight up Debo snatches every single gun in Alexandria. He even had Rick hold a town hall meeting asking for whoever had any of the missing guns from the inventory to come forward. And I gotta say, it truly hurts to see my goat getting publicly embarrassed like this. Cause this man Rick was searching for them guns like someone's life depended on it, which it probably did. But eventually, they find the missing guns and Negan and his group leave Alexandria for the time being. But not before Negan drops a freaky one-liner on Rick's head. I just slid my dick down your throat and you thanked me for it. Watching that scene back now, I should have realized Rick was not getting his get back this season. Cause another man saying that shit in your ear like that. Deserves an instant crash out. But you know, we do get a crash out a couple episodes later. But it's not from Rick, it's from Carl. This man sneaks onto a van headed to Negan's camp with a golden scar and tries to capture Negan all by himself. And you would think, after he killed a few of Negan's members in the process, he would be dead. But it's the complete opposite. Negan respects Carl's crash out abilities and just spends the whole day with him. And while he's with Carl and Alexandria, he starts playing pool with Spencer. And Spencer immediately just goes on a rant about Rick and why Negan should kill him. And maybe if he eased into it over time, he could have convinced Negan to do it. But Negan is a professional bullshit detector and he sees right through him and just kills him. Then Rosita tries to shoot Negan, but this man blocks it with his bat. Not on purpose or anything, but... I'm not gonna lie, if I'm Negan, I'm capping all the way to my death. Hey, y'all y'all saw how that bitch tried to shoot me from point blank range and I matrix blocked that shit with Lucille? Cause first of all, who's fact checking me? It's a zombie apocalypse. Second of all, if they do try to fact check me, I'll just have them killed. Cause I'm Negan. I'm capping all the way to my death. They're gonna be talking about me like I was the Jordan of the zombie apocalypse. But after the failed assassination attempt, Negan is really pissed and asks for who made the bullet. And after the real culprit doesn't come forward, Negan orders his henchman to kill someone, and Olivia catches a nasty 360 no scope to the face. In a zombie apocalypse, I know that's not the way she thought she was gonna go out. That's just really tough. Now, as crazy as a feat that Negan pulled off by blocking a bullet with Lucille, I think the season finale really emphasizes how overpowered he was this season. Because in the season finale, Sasha poisons herself so she'll die, just so she can turn into a walker in the hopes that she can take out Negan. And that shit still didn't work and after that rick's group is on the verge of being squad wiped and it takes a whole tiger attacking negan's group and help from ezekiel's group to gain the upper hand and i'm not gonna lie when i first saw the tiger in the show i was like oh shit that's cool a tiger but to see shiva actually being used to fight against negan's group that shit was insane but it also did look a little bit corny like a whole fucking tiger is attacking people now okay bro but Shiva actually is in the Walking Dead comics, so it's not like they just made it up. But yeah, it took all that just to push Negan's group back. Insane. But yeah, that is why, in my opinion, Season 7 Negan is one of the greatest villains of all time.